Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Well, happy Advent, happy Sister Advent. Mary Grace. We're in the middle of it. Oh my gosh. Still chugging on. Here we are, week three. Week three. This is Let Love Podcast. We're walking through Advent. We're finding our way. And this week, this is Sister Annie's Day, by the way. <laughs> we haven't guessed. <laughs> and Sister, Sister Mary Grace. Mary Grace. Yep. So good to see you. Mm-hmm. Um, this week, we're going to light another candle. Mm-hmm. And it's. We're changing it up. Ooh, Looks a little different. Last week was peace, mm-hmm. and we went there. Mm. You know, when you talk about peace, you got to talk about what doesn't bring you peace. Right. You got to um, go there, otherwise you can't arrive there, right? There it is. You got to kind of be bold. But now we're turning the corner mm. in this Advent season, and we're lighting this candle of joy. Mm-hmm. This is Gaudete Sunday. Yes. And it's only, we're on the on ramp, sister. We're on like, ramp. You know, you've turned the corner when there's pink comes out. That's no, ooh. this is Christmas is in the air. You can feel it. The rose grab it. colored vestments. Yeah. <laughs> not pink. Any good priest would tell you they are not pink. Yeah. These are rose colored vestments. Something's different. It really catches your attention. And yeah, there it we're is. Going somewhere. Amen. <laughs> catches your attention. And it does. It, it throws us to look now towards Christmas Day, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, that spirit of anticipation. Uh, and whoa, he's coming. Mm-hmm. He's coming. And I want my heart to be ready. Mm-hmm. So it's like persevering too. Yeah. I also think too, sister, again, before we get started, Advent, I'm noticing, is just such a time of like nostalgia. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like of remembering, of remembering mm-hmm. Christmas past, of remembering right. um, kind of, you know, your old uh, funny stories. I think every family has a Christmas tale. About, it's true. You know, like something funny that happened or, yep. um, you know, something totally crazy in the whole process of decorating the house or, mm-hmm. you know, when mom had a meltdown or, you know, <laughs> yeah. which was probably reasonable because uh-huh. she's trying to prepare Christmas for, you know, her whole herd of children. But what do you think about Christmas for us Australians a little different? You know, I'm hmm. It wasn't until I came here that I actually experienced a real white Christmas. You see, in Australia, it's like we're like midsummer. You know, you're right. It's oh, yeah. like peak of heat. But it's funny. We do the whole winter thing as much as we can. So we have these fake – we always had a fake Christmas tree. You know, you put it in the box, you pull it out of the box. I was shocked the first time I came here and we actually bought one. I was like, why don't you just buy one in the box, sweet and easy, <laughs> unwrap it, stick it together, click and go. Uh, and we even had – you know, we had the fake snow where you could – but my favorite was usually about a couple of days before Christmas, everyone would gather on the beach on the weekend and Santa would come in on like a jet ski. When, when he came around that corner, you knew Christmas was here. Are there, you know? even, are there even chimneys in Australia? You know, that's a good question. I don't ever remember having an indoor fireplace. I mean, other people might have, but we never, it was never quite warm enough for it. Right. You know, we had the fake fires. They were pretty popular. <laughs> but, you know, around Christmas, wildfires are kind of, that's our natural disaster. Wow. So you kind of Santa Claus I on know. a jet ski. Isn't that funny? Yeah, <laughs> it's really yeah, funny. yeah. But I was so excited, and it's but it's bizarre. You know, we watch the Christmas movies, but it's all heat. There's no snow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's nice to get the real deal here. <laughs> that's that's yeah. awesome. Well, we do praise God. Uh-huh. I mean, I grew what up about in you? What, rural what comes Maine. To mind? That's uh-huh. thing. It was always white, and if it wasn't white, it was a sore disappointment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also think too. I don't know. When I always think of Christmas, I, again, one of eight kids, it's mm-hmm. like there was always something happening. <laughs> you know, there's always a Christmas disaster. Um, and I do find during the Advent season, mm. it's so fun actually to think of what at the time might have felt like a crisis or, you know, that Christmas meltdown moment. And to look back and just to see, right, a family striving to to show up. Mm. for the gift, just mm-hmm. to show up and be together. And I think that's so heroic. And actually, I find years later, it's what I cherish, you know, <laughs> that even though, you know, not all the gifts got wrapped or my twin sister got into the gifts before mm. Christmas Day and kind of spoiled the <laughs> the, <laughs> the idea of Santa Claus or <laughs> or like having brothers. Uh-huh. You have brothers. I do. Yeah. Um, they just bring a different element. A different, know, different focus, a different, different interests. Yeah. 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 You know, and I think, I don't know if I've told this story uh-huh. before, but I was laughing so hard the mm-hmm. other day because 
we had asked my brothers, we really wanted to entrust something to them, mm. right? So there's six girls, two boys, like, let's give the boys something that's going <laughs> to really grow them, mm. you know? Mm. And we're like, guys, why don't you hang the stockings? You know, this isn't hard. Just hang the stockings. We had a nice little kind of spiral st- staircase and hang those things up. And um, yeah, you know, we'll, that's it. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Simple. Straightforward. Simple. Right. So, um, how'd they go? Well, you know, it got quiet, right? Yeah. And it, it was like, gosh, we asked the guys to do that like two hours ago and we yeah. haven't seen them. The house is quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, you know, let me go find them. Let me go check on them. <laughs> and sure enough, I found them and the two of them were <laughs> laughing hysterically mm-hmm. and they were playing a game. <laughs> And the game was because they had thought, well, it started with mm-hmm. the stockings mm-hmm. and they used a staple gun to uh-huh. staple gun the stockings to the ceiling so that, yes, they were hung, but no one could access them. And they of thought course. that was so funny. <laughs> Only one of them could be accessed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, and then they proceeded to staple Christmas receipts into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> With the staple gun? With the staple gun. Into each other. And they were trying huh. to do it, um, like staple the other guy. Yeah. Um, and the dare was like not to make any show of pain. Wow. Yeah. I mean, again, I was like, exactly what I said. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> guys, did you recently get your tetanus shot? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, here's the nurse and me being like, meanwhile, they were having a dandy good time. Of course. And I think this is this wow, is one of those some serious special moments. It's memories. <laughs> you know? Ouch. I can just feel the pain of that. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm sure everyone has stories like this, right? Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm sure we have many of them. Oh, my goodness. I, I even remember like when we, we would always go to midnight mass at mm-hmm. night. And I would always remember, it's funny, as a kid, you like try and you you want you want the dream that, you know, Santa's real to be real. So I remember like not looking too closely at things, but I remember we would all run to the car just to get in time for mass. And then I remember this one time looking back and you could see at the front door through the silhouette, mom and dad walking back and forth with these big surfboards in their hands. And you're like, okay. wow, I didn't <laughs> realize we had surfboards. Isn't that interesting? And it's like blindly right in front of us because they have like this 10 minutes when the kids are in the car ready to go to mass to pull all the presents oh out, gosh. all the gifts. Um, but you just hold on to this hope that you didn't see what you just saw. You know, and you're like, surely <laughs> Santa's going to come in the next hour and we're gone. And he's going to bring um, you the surfboard. They will. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, it's awesome it's how different awesome. they can be. It is awesome. Well, I hope, I hope your brothers recuperated after that. They don't have scars. You know, they seem to do just fine, actually. <laughs> yeah. And and you, you do look back at those moments oh. when you're like, wow, um, impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet, when I think about it now, yeah. years later, it's hysterical. It and is. just the fact that we're all, we're, we're trying, trying to, to get there. And That's we're trying it. to make it something special and That's remember it. and get things together at the last moment. That's it. How would your brothers get together with a staple gun? It's, there it it's is. It's rare. <laughs> And everyone's bringing their unique piece. Yeah. And that families are so uh-huh. unique. And that's what makes it fun is right. we're all going to have a different idea about how to put the tree up and uh-huh. how to hang the lights and whether the lights are white or colored or, uh-huh. or if we put all the ornaments on or whether well, we have a ham. ornaments. Do you oh do like gosh. a standard classic? Oh, my mom yeah. always went for gold and white. Beautiful, but can we have some color? Color. I always dreamed of having a flashing different multicolored tree. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is good, sister. See, yeah. nostalgia remembering uh-huh. remembering those moments and i think it's time actually in advent that we can as we enter into this third week it's like mm-hmm. yeah to look forward enough to stay grounded yes. in this present moment to begin to taste that promise that mm. waits for us on christmas day mm. and and yet to hold fast to that we still have two full weeks mm-hmm. ahead of us and this week allowing us to Allowing ourselves to really taste that promise of joy. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming Mm -hmm. and the disciplines or whatever we have committed ourselves to in this journey, um, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. It's going to be worth it. And, uh, but let's look at what are the promises? Mm -hmm. What are the, what is the promise Mm -hmm. of this season? Mm -hmm. I don't know, sister. Should we kick it off with a prayer? Yeah. Let's start. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and we uh, cry out to you as your children. We praise you uh, for the gift of this life that we get to share in with you for sustaining us right now in your love and your promises. 
And Father, we ask you in Jesus' name to send your Holy Spirit and you into our hearts right now, wherever we find ourselves. We ask you in Jesus' name to fill us with the spirit of your joy, of your peace, the spirit of hope, and all the gifts that you desire to give us, especially during this Advent journey. We give you permission to come. You're welcome here. We ask for the gift of prayer that we may open our hearts more and more to every good gift that you're sending. We ask especially the um, intercession and the protection and the company of our mother Mary to soften and open our hearts to all that you are bestowing upon us this Advent and today as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Waiting, pray for us. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Whoa. Well, Um, I feel even the quiet of Advent come into my heart more deeply, Mm. actually, as we begin this third week. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, Last week, you know, the battle for peace mm-hmm. and going there, leaning in. It's there, yep. But here, yeah, looking towards the promises that come to us. And I I hear that most deeply, too, in the gospel mm-hmm. that the church gives to us on Gaudete Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, sister, I feel like I just want to steep deep in that mm-hmm. word and move from that, actually, yes. as we journey in Advent this week. Yeah. Because the church gives us each year specifically chosen messages, right? Um, passages of scripture that are particular and that we're all meditating on each year. And this year is a specific year. We're in year A. It's the new year. And uh, this has been chosen. And a particular, um, yeah, it's just good to see too that God wants us to to hear this word this week now together and to meditate as a church together on what, what he's communicating to us at this point in time. It's kind of cool just to pause and say, okay, Lord, What's your word for all of us together too? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I wonder, sister, do you want to pause together and read this gospel? Let's do it. Let's. And then, I don't know, it can be even like a little Lexio. It's like I would I would love to just hear and also to share yeah. myself. It's like actually for all those listening to take a moment and, mm-hmm. and ponder like how is this word moving your heart? Right. What is the invitation of this to you personally? Mm-hmm. And like – where and how does it bring about a resolution mm-hmm. as you begin this new week of grace mm-hmm. in this Advent season? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Where are we going, sister? Can you read the I word? That, yeah. So it's from the gospel according to Matthew. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with the question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has none been greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. Amen. Mm. Okay, that's a mm-hmm. really powerful gospel. It is. It is. It's really powerful. And speaking of nostalgia too, like it's fascinating how, you know, we're so quick in Christmas to to be quick to think about the joy, you know, the joy of like these mm-hmm. celebrating times, all these memories that mm-hmm. come up, all these good memories. And and even now as we like turn towards looking to the joy of these actual memories being manifest again, it's beautiful just to see how God is like inviting us to consider these deeper joys, Mm. these joys that are, yes, they're about the surface level experiences of happiness and, um, and goodness and family and belonging, but he's, it's almost like he's pausing us to consider the deeper joys, um, 
that resound at the depths of our hearts, these places um, where he wants more, where Jesus is actually coming to, where Jesus wants mm. to touch. Um, you know, we can think about the, the lighter the lighter celebrations, but Jesus is like, I am so serious about your experience of joy mm. that I'm willing to go wherever you're held back, wherever you can't fix, mm. wherever you can't see or or, or uh, feel the more to which I'm calling you to is like all those places, that's where I want joy. Wow. Mm. Oh my gosh. And that's so powerfully spoken in this, this gospel. I mean, mm-hmm. again, everything you're saying, sister, resonates so deeply with yeah. how this word, as you read it, mm-hmm. like hit my own heart in the sense of, right, um, John the Baptist heard in prison, oh, yeah, right? That struck me too. Yeah. The, the works of the Christ. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm I'm there with with John. I'm mm-hmm. like, whoa! Like, where am I in prison, cool. mm-hmm. right? Interiorly, or where do I feel trapped? Mm-hmm. Where do I feel like I'm not free? And to hear this this gospel, because mm-hmm. as you say, that's right where Jesus sits, where He seeks us. Like, what's the invitation there? It's like, actually, hmm. you go tell John, the blind regain their sight, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news mm. proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I read that, I hear that, I'm like, I mean, this is what we desire more deeply. Right. And, and what you're talking about, sister, it's like Jesus holds out to us gifts that are not casual, right? Mm -hmm. They seek to answer the deepest ache of our hearts, right? Like the places where we want to see, where we want to see in truth our own hearts, Mm -hmm. or we want to see God's invitation to me, or where I want to see that there's meaning in my life Mm -hmm. or possibility um, that is born forth from the gift that Jesus wants to give of himself, because I know that I don't have strength there, Mm -hmm. or like to walk. Um, Where do I feel crippled? Mm -hmm. Um, Lepers are cleansed. Where do I feel like I want God's mercy to wash Mm -hmm. me, um, wash me clean, renew, purify my heart, the deaf hear? Where do I feel deaf? Like I can't hear, I can't receive that life-giving word Mm -hmm. um, that I feel, you know, kind of, um, separated from the voice yes. or, f- or from that invitation of the Father. Hmm. Where do I feel dead? Hmm. I mean, where do I want that resurrection to touch my life? Hmm. Where do I feel poor? I mean, hmm. listen, I don't get through a day where I can't, I can't give you at least eight good targets where mm-hmm. I have felt my own poverty or my own weakness. Uh-huh. Um, and then he concludes, blessed is the one who takes no offense at me, right? Mm-hmm. Like that it's, up to us. I hear that invitation. Am I going to look to Jesus there? Am mm-hmm. I going to welcome him there? Am I going to put a welcome mat out? Am I going to give my yes? Mm-hmm. Um, cool. It's a, again, we're leaning in again, but this is a dare. But mm-hmm. look at, look at what he puts in front of us mm-hmm. as his promises. Mm-hmm. He's ready to show up. Mm-hmm. And even just that, I mean, even just, you know, that struck me too, even just he heard in prison. It's like, even John's, when he's hearing this good news, he, you know, life isn't working out in the best way for him right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's, we know he's coming to the end of his life. He's chained up. He's limited in almost every way. And yet this good news that is communicated by word, by testimony, um, has reached him in this prison and given him everything his heart has been longing to hear. Uh, and to me too, what the other one that struck me too is his question and response to this. John says, you know, I, I you ask Christ, are you the one? Like there's this question of this cry of hope that I can recognize in my own heart of like these promises that Jesus makes all the way through the prophets in, and then we even see in the first reading mm-hmm. um, that all these good things are going to come, you know, and then we have the reality of our lives too, which is constantly in conflict with God's promises. Mm-hmm. Like where is God fulfilling them? How is he showing up? Um, and there can be this cry in our own heart of like, are you, I, are you the one? Are you gonna? Are you gonna bring these promises about? Are they for real? Can mm-hmm. I really cling to them? Mm-hmm. Can I really hope in them? Uh, are they possible? Is this um, too idealistic? Is this too far fetched for my reality? Mm-hmm. And in the prisons that I'm finding myself in, can this really break through into mm-hmm. my life and context, which feels bound, held back? Um, 
And Jesus's response is powerful. He's like, yes, how does, the, how does this promise get communicated to him? He hears the word, this witness of wow. others, um, and the word carries this weight that sets him free within the prison. Wow. We know he doesn't come out. Um, but somehow his heart in the awareness that Jesus um, is the promise he made to us fulfilled, that these long, that these historic long bound promises he's made are now being manifest in the world, in his life, mm -hmm. and can access him in the prison that he finds himself. It's the joy that John's experiencing present. Mm -hmm. He's come. He's real. He's faithful. Um, and the spoken word to me is is bringing joy to my heart wow, in a way that even external circumstances might still bound me. My heart can be set, be set free in joy, this joy that's deeper, mm. this joy that um, I can access no matter what prison I find myself in. Wow, sister. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You know what it brings to my heart? Yeah. Again, this is the Holy Spirit. He, like, peels <laughs> – Heals and opens the word yeah. and opens our hearts layer uh -huh. by layer. But it reminds me of, have you seen Prince of Egypt? Yes. Yeah. The okay. cartoon version? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. Classic. But excellently done, Yeah, actually. And uh -huh. because, and here I am, I'm sitting here, I'm so grateful to God mm -hmm. that we have a season, a season of waiting and expectation, a season of Advent to prepare our hearts for this gift because our hearts need it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we need time to acknowledge, um, right? Where do I want to welcome this Savior? Where mm -hmm. does this Savior want to bring the gift of Himself? But there, what it's brought me to think about as you're speaking, because we have a God of freedom, mm -hmm. a God who desires our freedom, a God mm -hmm. who desires our joy from the inside out, from the deepest nook and cranny of our heart. And there's this powerful moment when, because this is a story of the Exodus, right? Mm -hmm where Moses brings the Israelites uh, to the Red Sea, hmm. and they become aware that all of Pharaoh's army has chased them down, yeah. and that they're literally standing at you know the edge of the Red Sea, and they're like, uh, they're freaking out. They're mm -hmm. like, where do we go now? Like, oh my gosh, I'm sure tempted to doubt this, this God who, who promised them freedom and exodus, mm -hmm. but they're terrified. They're totally mm -hmm. terrified. And then all of a sudden, this pillar of fire comes down from heaven and stays Pharaoh's army. Hmm. And then Moses, and this is the depiction in Prince of Egypt, which I thought was powerfully and beautifully done, you know, makes an act of faith and plants hmm. his staff in the water and receives God's promise to him, like, I I'm going to do great things hmm. um, in and through, like, he mentions the staff that Moses carries, huh. plants the staff in the water, and then you see, yeah, like in in the most sublime way that only cartoons can depict, water shoots up, cool, and this path is opened up through this giant red sea. Wow! <laughs> but the moment that this gospel harkens my heart to is Moses opens up this path, mm -hmm. and there's a moment of pause among the Israelites, there's this moment of like, can we trust mm -hmm. this way? Because it's terrifying. They're about to walk through the bottom of a sea right. with, with you know, water towering yeah. on each side. It's terrifying, yeah, right? It's like mm -hmm. they have to have faith mm -hmm. even to step onto that pathway wow. to freedom, which is so mm -hmm. powerful. And uh, Moses mm -hmm. is Aaron eventually smiles and he goes first mm. and then his sister Miriam goes um, and one by one the Israelites start to trust wow. and have faith in the path that God has opened for them cool and yes as they as they trudge through <laughs> to the other side they find their way into this this journey of freedom mm. and into claiming that gift um, and yet the courage that it took mm. the trust that it took, the act of faith that it took. And I think hmm. I think I stand on the edge of that as I hear this gospel. I love that. Yep. I hear like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm acknowledging, I know I need a savior. Um, the promise is, is being held out to me. Cool. And I need to take that step. I need mm -hmm. to persevere. Like we're halfway <clears throat> through Advent mm -hmm. and I need to press on in faith. That's awesome. Well, it just makes me think too. Like you think about it, at this point, he's not he's not gonna he's not gonna see Christ after this, mm -hmm. right? And he's hearing this truth spoken to him from prison, 
uh, you know, the blind regain their sight, the lame work, these miracles that are happening outside the prison walls. And this word is spoken to him. These, his disciples come back and say, yes, we've seen him. This is God fulfilling his promises. This is him really out there. John at some time in prison, having heard that witness, had to make that kind of act of faith in his heart. Amen. You know, like, okay, he's not going to leave that bounds. He's heard this truth and almost the same as Moses. There has to come a point in our own hearts where we where we do, we have the freedom to say, I believe. I believe God is faithful. I believe he's going to show up in these places. I believe that the places where I feel I cannot take another step, he's going to he's going to make me walk. You know, uh, in the mountains that <laughs> of waters that we see in our life, it's yes. like, yes, I see them. Yes, I bring Jesus in. But there is an invitation to make an act of faith. Amen. Jesus, I believe that you're real, that the places where I feel like a leper, you know, these incurable illnesses of whatever I'm experiencing, certain obsessions, addictions, or ways of thinking, Jesus, I know you're with me, but this next step is the invitation of, I believe that you're that you're going to heal me here, that miracles are going to happen. Amen. This is a season of miracles, and I believe it, and you're going to fulfill it in your time. And even if I remain in the prison of these places, that... Uh, that this faith brings Jesus into the prison where I am. Amen. Yeah. Oh my gosh, sister, it's so powerful. That's awesome. Well, even it it causes me to make a mm. resolution of, you know, the nostalgia of this season mm -hmm. and the gift of memory. But actually, like, this is a moment as you enter into the third week of Advent to take time to hold a memory for his wonders in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, to remember um, the moments God has been faithful to remember the ways he has saved you, that mm -hmm. he has delivered you, to remember uh, the ways that he's blessed you. I remember, um, again, it was a number of weeks ago, uh, yeah. the Sisters of Life have a tradition at Thanksgiving breakfast. Sure. I know. It's, we, <laughs> we start early. <laughs> yeah, we start really early. Yeah. After a cup of coffee, of course, uh -huh. you know, you got to kind of uh, yeah, find your way. Otherwise, it's hard to be thankful. Be it <laughs> it just helps the Thanksgiving move. That's it. You got you to need, you need a few gulps. Mm -hmm. But um, just sitting there and each sister offering, yeah, mm -hmm. um, what she's grateful for. Mm -hmm. um, it is so powerful. Yeah. As you begin to remember his blessings and his gifts and his graces and just the fact that there is a God and there's someone who's bigger and greater and mm -hmm. loves you. I mean, my whole heart mm -hmm. almost exploded. I mean, honestly. Yeah, it's powerful. And I'm still yeah. living off of it, actually. And this is where, cool. like, as you step into persevering in this Advent season, it's mm -hmm. like taking time, take a prayer period. Um, this is what I'm compelled to do. And yeah. just write down his graces, mm -hmm. his wonders in your life. The ways that he has shown up mm. and he has delivered and he has kept his promises. And I think feeding our hearts and our minds with that give us strength to to persevere, um, to hold out for these promises that he wants to give even more of mm. and even more deeply. And as you say, sister, that deeper lasting joy yep. of knowing that wherever we are, whatever we're facing, uh, his joy is is possible because it's a person. Right. And as he lives within us, uh -huh. that is the gift he wants to give you and mm -hmm. sustain you in whatever it is mm. um, and however you're seeking cool. uh, that that freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, that I love that. Deliverance. It's like Thanksgiving unwraps the gift. Ooh. You know, it's like we know we receive graces, but you're right. When you put word to it or you bring it to prayer, it like it becomes more. You unpack it. You, you uh, yeah, you tease it out. It grows. It grows. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Wow, sister. This is. Just fun breaking the word open yeah, with you in real time. In real time, this is it's it's yeah. the spirit of God, and my heart is so nurtured actually, uh -huh. and really, I, I can't wait to live this next week of Advent. Uh huh. But actually, I think the crown on this week mm -hmm. is someone else <laughs> that we need to talk about. It's true. We can't. We're right in the middle of two big Marian feasts. We oh, can't. My goodness. And even today. Today. Right? December 12th. How can we not? Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yeah, she's the best. This gift yeah. of a mother. Yeah. Who is going to help gift. us. Right, sister? Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going to tell on you, this is your you feast can. day. Listen, I'll claim it. I'm proud. This I'm, is your I'm feast day. Yeah. You only yeah. get one of these things. You get one. You kind of get one shot at it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, sister, it's can, true. You, can you tell me why did you choose Our Lady of Guadalupe oh my gosh. as a way to celebrate your feast day? Mm. Yeah, listen, we could do a whole other episode on that, sister. <laughs> <laughs> 
But in short, it's funny how, yeah, when we look back on our lives, we can see in particular ways and, uh, yeah, images that Mary manifests her love to us, mm. you know, and it, and it's and it's interesting to see if we look back on our own devotions, it's like, you know, what image or, uh, I don't know, devotional item of Mary kind of like captures our hearts at different times. And I don't know how this happened. I really feel like she chose me. But, you know, in Australia, we're a long way away from Mexico. So there's not many. It's different now in the, in living in the U.S. I love it. Our Lady Guadalupe is just about everywhere. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she Almost every church has an image somewhere of a Lady Guadalupe. I love her. But it's not the same in Australia. She was next to nowhere. So I remember seeing when I was, gosh, a teenager, seeing this image of her. And I loved it, probably for more peripheral reasons, <laughs> uh, more superficial reasons. It was like the coloring was kind of mm-hmm. cool. It was earthy. Mm-hmm. It was not your... Um, not your average image of Mary, but I loved it because it was this, it was a depiction again, I think I'd said it, this uh, depiction of a real mother who knows uh, the messiness and uh, the craziness that her children can be caught up in sometimes. And she, it wasn't a perfect image of her, but it was like this perfect mother that was not afraid to be in whatever um, context her children find herself in. And I always just felt like she came near, that she was uh, present and could relate. And I think that was, um, definitely a start of it. So I always just love this image. It was like the photo I had of my mom in that image. How beautiful. So it's always been powerful. But I mean, the fact that the church looks to her on December 12th, that God gave her at a time that was in the middle of Advent. Mm. I think she kind of holds a magnificent mystery in this image. Um, and I think part of it has to do with like what scene of Mary's life that God has almost paused in time for us to capture it's not awesome. you know and, he, and here it is this woman that has just said yes to god in the mystery of her life um that has just said yes to a new way a new path that she did not see coming um and god has paused in her saying yes and her giving birth mm-hmm. at this time where mary has the intimacy of god to herself mm. that she finds him within uh, that he's growing within her um in a way that is personal and intentional and uh and it's and it's a beautiful opportunity to kind of pause on this gift it is at this time to to ponder prayerfully the gift of Christ within each one of us wow. that he's chosen our very bodies and souls to be with us um and I love how in one of the arms of Mary's mantle, there's, there's kind of a little extra room on her left side. If you look at the image of Our Lady Guadalupe, there's a little extra room. Cool. You know, I love in Advent just kind of drawing near to that spot that, you know, we can't go wrong going to Mary, that she's going to uh, protect us, guide us, but ultimately bring us to this encounter where heaven and earth are one in the womb of Mary, um, where we find ourselves close to Christ when we come near her, mm. uh, that she draws us to look within to the light that's been given us. Uh, and then we don't have to go far and look um, to extreme ways of being pious, but this gift that is entrusted to you and me and found in the center of our hearts that Christ is with us, within us. Whoa. Hmm. I'm so glad I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that was the shortest, but, no, sister, but well, she's she's a good mother. Listen, well, and I hear you saying too, like, because it's I think it's the, the black sash wrapped yes. around her, her little mm-hmm. belly indicates um in a sense she was a perfect enculturalization mm-hmm. of the gospel for the native people mm-hmm. of of Mexico in that time and right. um and that black sash indicates she's with child mm-hmm. and that yes was again there's so many levels and layers yeah. to uh, and again God's masterpiece that uh-huh. he gave this image to us and as you're saying sister he he invited us to pause and mm-hmm. and actually th- through these people at the time and in the 1500s in what is now mm-hmm. modern day Mexico could gaze upon this image and receive new life yeah. in God mm-hmm. and it's the image of a woman with child mm. it's the image of a mother mm-hmm. among other things a woman who is in prayer who's living in relationship mm-hmm. with with God Hmm. And as you speak, sister, I'm just so powerfully moved, actually. It's like, this is the time to tap into the presence of God dwelling within us. Yes. Like Advent is a deeply interior journey. Mm-hmm. And and this is a time to ask for every grace. Go to Our Lady. Mm. Um, ask her to wrap you in her mantle. Mm-hmm. Ask her to be a mother to you. Ask her to to help you to be aware, to become more aware of that life of Christ Mm -hmm. within your heart, Mm -hmm. within your soul, and to allow that light to grow as it was growing 
within Our Lady, mm-hmm. uh, because this is what Advent's all about, is allowing that light, that mm-hmm. life of Christ to grow within us, mm-hmm. to become aware of that life within us, mm-hmm. uh, to be guided uh, by that life within us, for our yes to be strengthened and given to God because of that life that we're carrying, mm-hmm. right? Um, that it directs us, actually, as as Christ directed Mary and mm-hmm. her yes and and Joseph's yes, and and yet he was hidden. He mm-hmm. was hidden within. Um, and yet, look how boldly Mary and Joseph had already set out mm. on their way in faith in this life. Mm. Um, Mary, sh- she could feel him moving around. Mm-hmm. Joseph could see him, um, mm. that sweet little baby bump mm-hmm. in Our Lady. <laughs> um, and yet, for him, a great act of faith, that this was the life of Christ. And mm-hmm. I think making an act of faith um, that God dwells within us yes. and Christ loves being there mm-hmm. within and he wants to grow. Mm-hmm. He wants to grow and mm-hmm. he wants to become everything for us. Mm. So I don't know, sister, there's so much we could say about so Our Lady much. of Guadalupe. Yeah. Um, but even just that the joy is found within, that's what she's pointing to. You know, this is, this is the joy that the Christ child that, that wants to come to you and me in Advent conceived by faith. Every every act of faith we're making is is seeing him grow, become brighter. Wow, sister. Yeah, it's awesome. Wow, sister. Well, I guess before we go, we should do challenges. Okay, sister, I have a challenge. Okay. I came across this quote recently. It's Cardinal Seurat, who just has gold nuggets every sentence he writes. But talking about prayer, he said, the deepest means for contemplation is what is before you. And I just, I love that. The deepest means for contemplation is what is before you, you know, and as we, as we go deeper in Advent now, and we're really, we're really talking about the matters of the heart, that my encounter with Jesus in my life is going to be found right where I am. You know, whether I'm going on a walk right now, if I'm sitting in my car, stuck in traffic, um, I'm folding laundry, wherever I am right now or throughout my day, um, The deepest means for contemplation is what is before me, which is good news. And that's where we're going to encounter us to the joy of Jesus, that he doesn't, he desires us to come and and pray in chapel and go to church, but God is not exclusive or um, limited to those Mm -hmm. places. He wants to break into every moment of our day. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's good news that I can find him before me. So even where I find myself now, you know, just to remember that um, wherever I am, wherever I am, you know, kind of like a Lady Guadalupe, like the child remains within at all times. Uh, so just to invite him into surprising times during our day, maybe days, yeah. that, moments of our day that we haven't typically recognized that. We we're over the sink. We're, we're, I don't know, even out to meal with friends. Um, just to remember that the deepest means is whatever lies before me. He's yeah. there. Oh, I love mm. that, sister. Well, I might piggyback on yours. Yeah? Actually, because. Please do. <laughs> just, and then just in brief. Um, uh-huh. I'm you know, living in New York City, Manhattan, for four years. Mm. And I remember when I was first missioned to the mm-hmm. city, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my prayer life. I'm going <laughs> to lose my contemplative outlook. I'm going right? to like, you know, yeah. I'm going to be scattered to the wind with all the horns and c- craziness that happens down there. Those four years, my interior contemplative life was totally magnified. Wow, cool. And it's precisely what you're talking about mm-hmm. is – what is before you is precisely the the way God desires to come mm-hmm. and will be there for you. Mm-hmm. And I think that is, you know, the spirit led me into that dare mm. uh, to actually trust that all the noise around me, that I could tuck mm. in deep within and I could abide with him and stay with him and actually in that bring him into that awesome. all and mm-hmm. not be me, not go out into it, but actually have him um, be that light, which which gave light to everything else, which um, that presence, which bled into everything else wow, and brought awesome. meaning and perspective. And I think especially as we persevere in this time of Advent, yeah, it's like I'm mm-hmm. sure the Christmas parties are heating up and mm-hmm. everybody wants to go follow the lying and that's <laughs> awesome and good. Um, uh-huh. And actually to trust that Jesus wants to encounter you in in everything um, yes. and in, in the, big, the big yeses and what well, can feel at uh, times like a crazy season, actually, yeah. just to abide with him and trust him mm-hmm. and allow it to be um, his gift to you mm-hmm. um, and reveal his love for you. Amen. 
Well, should we close it down with a prayer? Yeah, please lead us, sister. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you are our joy, and we thank you that you've given yourself to us. We ask for every grace come. Come into the prisons of our heart. Come into the places where we desire new life. Come into those places uh, where we want to walk um, and run freely in your life and in your grace and in your peace. Uh, come to those places uh, that only you know, Lord. Only you know. And um, may we give you permission to bring yourself, your love, your peace, and your joy. Uh, grant us every grace to abide in your presence and to persevere in your grace as we just thank you ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. God bless and keep all Pure of joy, you. joy, sister. Oh, such Good a gift. Oh, see you soon. Amen. Let's do this again. <laughs> see you next week. Amen. <laughs> This was Let Love Podcast for the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.